You're still watching ways now. Pulses, also known as legumes, are the edible seeds of leguminous plants cultivated for food. Dried beans, lentil, and peas are the most commonly known and consumed types of pulses. On the celebration of this year's, um, this year's Pulsey Day, under the theme Love Pulses is for Healthy Diet and Planet, um, healthy diet and planet, an opportunity to raise awareness to re to recognize the contribution of pulses to sustainable food systems and healthy diet. So tell me, you that say you want to lose weight, this is one of my secrets to weight loss. You had to come and just open <laughs> that can on live TV. Okay. <laughs> I, I had to squeeze it in. <laughs> That's my, yeah. that's, but, but honestly, that's the biggest, um, uh, what's it called, weight control for me, right? So I try to avoid, I do lots of legumes and all of that. So I think it's a good for whoever is out there, you know, trying to see how they can manage or control, you know. Some people don't want to, they don't want to lose weight, but they just want to maintain. So those are the good, uh, good ways. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me come to AK. AK, what did you find for us in the news? Because Temi has a full lecture for me. I dedicated my time for her. <laughs> okay, so my news today is very interesting. And I don't know, it's one of those things that make me wonder about this country. So it's from the Premium Times. It says Nigerian government to replace BBN with NIM, Minister. So it says here that the Nigerian government is considering replacing the bank verification number with BBN with the national identity number, the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Issa Patami, said on Monday. And the part of news that gets me, it says, it says that BBN is a regulator's policy, while NIN is the law. The strength of the law wherever you go is not the same with the policy of one institution. Now, while I agree with him that what he's saying, you know, it's, it's correct, but we have admitted that we put the cat before the horse. So why can't we kind of regulate and by that I mean it is okay NIN is what we should have relied on uh not BVN and you did not make that provision happen mm -hmm. okay you went ahead and you have BVN and then you have other sources please I've asked this question before why can't we generate our NIN from the um other identification we already have like so I have a BVN the same information you want to collect the same biometrics the same question the same things that you need the same data and information that you need are on other platforms why can't i use that to generate my nin hmm. we say we don't have money in this country we're going to build new structures we're going to put new things in place to ensure that the one that we even already have we abolish and put a new one and then we're not also thinking about the banks that are now going to also go through the same process how long did it even take us you know, for us to do BVN. No, but let me, let me... through that process again. Can I, can I to say that? that with NIN. Um, AK, so when, when I heard this, the argument actually makes sense because not many people have bank, um, uh, bank accounts. You remember, you are in the SME space. Part of your complaint is that they, the unbanked, they are much more than the people that are op uh, operating bank accounts, right? So this yes. one, this, um, this move, I think is, it will be beneficial at the no, end of the day because a lot of people me, have phone numbers. We just have a consolidation of some exactly. sort. So all of that information is on my driver's license. All of that information is on my BBN. All of that information is on my NIN. And then we keep building infrastructure and then employing people and buying devices, shipping them. The money we don't China, have. Using foreign exchange that we do not have. And it just seems like they're different layers meant to frustrate people. Can't we just consolidate exactly. and have I mean, one... That's fine. Thank you, Tammy. I was also coming I, when I'm when I'm talking about that structure. I'm not saying um, obliterate or that with for those people that mm -hmm. have BVN, can't we go and generate number? It okay. will take care of a certain amount. So I'm not saying that use only that. But if you have a BVN, is it that you don't trust the information being collected? Is it that you don't trust the immigrations with the passport that we have? And then do we consider the people in diaspora? Because you know that some of these people have to travel. To mm -hmm. a major city, maybe like Atlanta or somewhere else, to go and get this number. Mm -hmm. The money that we get from um, remittances in, in in from people from diaspora, I think in 2018 it was 26.3 billion dollars. Mm. Even it's more than the money we're going to make from our main uh, export, which is oil. So, are we considering all of this? 
when, when we're making these decisions because it, it doesn't really look like we think it will, today is something. Next tomorrow is another one. Wow. Let me let me leave it for Temi. <laughs> because Temi's time is up. Oh. <laughs> Temi, quickly, run us through something. Because you found something interesting you wanted to share with us. Absolutely. So for today, for my what's in the news today, um, I wanted to do a public service announcement um, instead. And I just very quickly wanted to talk about three financial terms that you should know. Go ahead. Right, okay. So very quickly, and I also think it's the perfect segue to the conversation we're having today um, for small businesses. So very quickly, number one, cash flow positive. What does it mean for you to be cash flow positive? This is when your cash inflows exceed your cash outflows, and it is um, applicable to both individuals on your personal finance journey um, and also for small businesses. So as a small business, for example, you know, your cash flow positive means that all of the money is coming in exceed what you're spending, right? And this is similar to profit, but it's the same thing. Because when you're talking about profit, you also have receivables, goods that you've sold, that the money hasn't come in, or, you know, what you owe the government essentially pay. It's all better to be cash flow positive because it means that the business is liquid. And again, cash is king, right? So very quickly, diversification, we're talking about diversification in investment. It means that you've spread your investments across a variety of asset classes, sectors, and currencies. So as a personal finance um, uh, strategy, you know, you want to say, okay, I'm going to invest in a bit of equity. I want to buy some bonds in USD or in Naira, a bit of US there, South African stocks, that kind of thing. So that way, you have a well-rounded portfolio. You are able to reduce your investment risk and also protect your portfolio against uncertainties. For example, when the stock market is down, you know, gold might be performing really well, right? And then finally, for dividends, uh, this is essentially an amount of money that a company delivers to their shareholders when they make profit. And as an investor, uh, you're happy to get this year on year because it enhances your investment returns over time. So cash flow positive, diversification, and dividends. These are financial terms that you ought to know about. Absolutely. <laughs> well, there is no how that at the end of this show, I, no, not this end of the show, at the end of this year, you know, because we're going to be focusing a lot on personal finance, SMEs, you know, business growth. There is no how that if you are actually watching and following through, your life will not change. That is the goal. You know, so we keep learning. Thank you so much, Tammy, for that. I'm sure somebody has, you know, mm -hmm. caught the light bulb. <laughs> all right, so we're going to take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking to our guests on um, strategies for SME growth. Stay with us. We'll be right back.